I want to tell you to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and look down and then don't look towards anybody else, okay? Okay, now say Bismillah. Bismillah. Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman. Nir Rahim. Nir Rahim. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An. An. La. La. Ilaha. Ilaha. Il. Il. Lal. Lal. La. La. Ho. Ho. Wahdahu. Wahdahu. La. La. Sharika. Sharika. Lahu. Lahu. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa. Wa. Rasuluhu. Rasuluhu. You made ten out of ten in Arabic. <laughs> now, come close, Alia. This is what you said in English, okay? I know what I said. No, no, no. <laughs> I begin. I begin. In the name of. In the name of. Allah. Allah. The most merciful. The most merciful. The most compassionate. The most compassionate. Okay. I bear. I. I bear. I bear. Witness. Witness. That. That. There is no one. There is no one. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship, except Allah. Except Allah, He is one. He is one. Alone. Alone, and has no partner. And has no partner. I bear witness. I bear witness that that Muhammad Muhammad, Allah's peace be upon him. Allah peace be upon him is is Allah's Allah's servant servant and Allah's messenger and Allah's messenger. Allah Akbar. Uh, Sister Eri, once you took Shahada, there are a few things that you should know. The very first thing is that, that Allah gave you the benefit of doubt that whatever you have done in the past was because of the lack of knowledge. So Allah has taken every shortcoming and mistakes and sins from your life record and you are as pure as the day your mother gave birth to you. So since you are spiritually pure, when you go home, take a shower to start your journey. But Allah also gave you benefit of doubt that whatever good you have done, you have done because of your good intention. So Allah has given all the record of good deeds that you have done. So you are the richest person of all those persons sitting here and in the whole world. But few things I would like to, to, to um, listen to me very carefully. By witnessing Allah, you are saying that uh, Allah is your ilah. And it means to say that Allah is closer to you than your juggler way. Allah is your hope, Allah is your support, Allah is your comforter, Allah is your mentor. Whatever you need, you talk to Allah directly. You don't have to come to me, you don't have to go to anybody else. And being a Muslim is a relationship of secret of love between you and Allah and nobody should know that. You don't have to declare to everybody that I'm a Muslim. And the only thing is that Allah loves you 70 times more than your mother. So whenever you face any kind of misfortune, you can say that a mother will not do anything wrong with the children. How could the Allah do anything wrong with the children? It will be a message for you to come to back to Allah. And remember that today you have put your hands in the hands of Allah and Allah will never let you down. Someone to say something? Why you took shahada? Thank you very much. Why you to Shahada? Bye. Yes. Well, maybe next year I can um, tell a longer version, but I've um, had some struggles in my very recent past, and my Christianity background hasn't held up to the standards that I needed it to, and so um, Islam is everything I need right now and for the rest of my future. So, thank you. And you got a big family here and I'm the head of the family, so never hesitate to, to call anybody for anything. Everybody is willing to help you here, okay? Thank you so much. And we are all, all here to giving in, okay? Thank you very much for witnessing that, okay? Hi, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, I'm still not loud enough. It's a microphone. Okay, so um, I don't know what to say, really, but... Um, I just really touched by Angela's story right now. <laughs> um, okay, right here. 
Okay. Um, I guess I came to Islam because, or um, by way of a lot of different like experiences, and um, some of them were good, and some of them were not so good. But um, it started when I was like a little, actually a really little kid, and uh, I don't really know what to say. So, um, I guess I started realizing that it's, um, well, when you have like an experience that's like really hard to get through, um, I think it's easier to know how to like talk to God. I think. I don't know how you guys feel about that. But for me it was like so easy. It was really easy and I didn't have a problem with it except that I didn't know anybody else who did it the way I did it. And <laughs> um, I was really different compared to everybody else I knew. And I wasn't going to stop my way because I'm me and like, you know, I do everything Christina way. So, um, I guess, I don't really know what else. Um, oh, okay, so I went to all these different schools. I had a total of 10 moves in high school. And in that, I got to use my stock money for <laughs> to go to um, private school. And that was really special for me because I knew I could do better. And I went to a Catholic school. And, oh, I tried to be Catholic so hard because I knew what I was didn't really count because you can choose whatever you want to be whenever you feel like it. And so I tried really hard to be Catholic, and they stuck me in the back on a folding chair. I don't like folding chairs. <laughs> and, um, and they said I wasn't allowed to go do the confession because I wasn't actually uh, Catholic. But I, I don't know what their deal with that was. So I didn't get to go to the confession thing. And I'm like, okay, fine then. And I looked all into Catholicism, and I'm like, this is really not for me. So I tried, um, like every time we moved, I tried a different church. And th it wasn't working. It really wasn't. And I went to a Lutheran school. That was private, too. And part of my education was arguing with my, like, um, not actually arguing, uh, but just having like heated conversation with the other students. And I'm like, no, you can't think like that because, and I would put my views into uh, the conversation and I learned that's not really a good thing to do. But I also learned I'm not Lutheran, there's no way. And so I really tried like every church you can think of except for, um, the church of the Christian scientists and I wasn't going to do that so <laughs> I'm sure they're great people but not for me so then finally I like came down to it again and I was about to go through my cycle where I looked and looked again and like I had been doing forever and I realized you know I can either at this point try Judaism or Islam. So Judaism didn't work because I didn't know Hebrew. <laughs> and I decided I'll try Islam. Um, and my friend's mom told me to go ahead and um, read the first part of the Quran. It was, I didn't get it. I'm like, so where's all the mystery stuff? Like, this is really straightforward and super easy. That's probably too easy. So it's, I don't think it's going to work. She says, well, what do you mean? It doesn't need mystery. You're like looking for something to be wrong. And I guess I came to Dr. Kazu's class, and after the first class, I felt stronger immediately. Like pretty much just seeing me for the first time, I just all of a sudden like, felt like, OK, I think I'm in the right place. And oh, another thing was uh, something I noticed with like all these churches I went to, 
is the first commandment says there's only one God. And you shouldn't worship anybody before that one God. Right? It's like basically that's what it's saying. So like I really think that's what I was doing the whole time. And now since all that time I didn't know what I was, Dr. Kazi helped me figure out and you guys all helped me figure out. Like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely Muslim. <laughs> and that's about it. Hey. Uh, my name is Angela. I'm honestly not really sure where my journey started. Um, I grew up as I'm Native American, so I grew up on a reservation, um, which is probably not something that a lot of you are familiar with. Um, but we're very spiritual, so my grandparents were always talking to me about the Creator and telling me stories, um, and that's what I grew up hearing. When I was 10 years old, um, all of us Native American children got shipped out to a Catholic boarding school because they thought that that would make us more American, I guess. Um, so I spent two years in a Catholic boarding school and none of it made any sense. And the only thing that I really learned after the two years was that I'm definitely not Catholic. <laughs> so um, as I got older, people started asking me, they were like, so what is your religion? And I was like, well, I don't really know. You know, we're spiritual, but we don't have a name for it. It's just a way of life. It's who we are. You know, you spend your whole day in prayer. Um, the elders are always telling us that we're supposed to walk in prayer. Every step is supposed to be a prayer. Um, and as long as you're doing that, then you're living life the way that you should. But we didn't have a name for it. So it made it really confusing when people would ask, what is your religion? Um, so I started looking into other religions and I started studying everything. Any religion that I could get information about, I was like, what is this? And eventually I would come to a point with all of them that I was like, this just doesn't make sense. No matter how many times a day I pray, I am never going to be a god. It's not happening. <laughs> um, they just didn't make sense. So time kept going on. Um, and after a while, um, I actually met a Muslim and we started talking. And I was like, wow, you do that? Really? Wow, so do I. And it, it just started getting to a point where I was like, you know, maybe I need to read more about this. So I went online. And I started reading whatever I could, um, and it all just made sense. Most of it was stuff that I had already heard from my grandparents. So it just seemed to make sense, so I kept reading. Um, and I went to the grocery store one day, and we had this little bin in the grocery store. Um, it was like books people would drop off, and they'd buy the books, and the money would be donated to charity. So right on the top of the stack was like all of these books about Islam. So I was like, cool, this is awesome. So I bought the whole stack of books, and I went home, and I started reading them, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this really makes sense. So then I decided that I was going to try to read the Quran. And I went ahead and I started reading it, and at first it felt a little bit weird, because a lot of the stuff that I was reading was stuff that I had heard from my grandfather. So at first it was like, okay, this is, this is different. And I kept reading it, and I was like, wow, um, I've been doing this my whole life, and I just never knew it. Um, so I just got to a point that it just made sense. And here I am. Hmm? Um, well, I came to his class. I found it online. <laughs> I moved to Houston, and I was like, you know, I really need to do this, but I don't want to do it on my own. So I looked online, and I found Dr. Kazi's class, and um, him and his wife have been there for me every step of the way. And I thank them and I love for it very much. Hi, um, my name is Kylie. I thought that he was going to forget about us, I was hoping, because I'm not really a big public speaker. Um, so anything good that comes out of this obviously isn't from me. Um, so my journey to Islam, I guess, started before I even kind of realized it with an introductory class like at college, right? Um, talking about art and architecture. So even just looking at the art and the architecture and seeing how faith just bleeds into everything in the Islamic culture just really got me interested in um, the faith. Um, so then the next year I met my now husband um, while he was studying 
here and teaching Arabic at my college. Um, and I think that um, <clears throat> my, my path towards Islam started out with kind of trying to search out my background of Christianity and comparing with him. I think a lot of like things that I learned came from, hey, but we learned it this way. How is it to you? Can we read these things together and compare and see what hap like see what comes of it? And what I began to find in like a religion that I was brought up in and didn't really know very well um, was that many of these things coincided well. And the reason I don't like talking in public is because I get like choked up, right? Um, but a lot of them began to like meet in the middle. So um, I searched out online and ordered the Quran from the masjid and got like an invite to the class. So then I started coming and I went to uh, eat with Dr. Kazi and his wife at their house, um, got introduced to, introduced to the family and it just was like a culminating experience from there, reading. Uh, while going to church, I had started going to church again um, to try to get more into this. And it's like every Sunday I would go to church in the morning and then I'd come to Islam class in the afternoon. So it was kind of funny, um, a dichotomy between those. But a lot of the times it was really interesting to see how it seg segued into a bigger understanding um, and like an understanding between that interfaith uh, relationship. So eventually I got to the point where I knew too much I guess to be at church um, so I would go on Sundays and kind of get frustrated and then come to class in the afternoon to the Islam class and be like wow this makes so much more sense or um, how did I not realize that before that like they're saying one thing and then doing another thing or like it just became very obvious to me and, and it stared me right in the face so there was nothing else I could do but accept Islam and accept Allah as the one God, right? So it all led to this path, you know, of um, taking Shahada last year. I took it in March, I think. And then this April, I got married. My husband came back to the U.S., so he's here now. And um, it's just like blessings upon blessings now that we've gotten to this, you know, now that I've come to this, like, end of the road, I guess, where they met and there was no other choice. So um, thank you. Like, I thank God like every day that he's brought me out of this, like what I thought I understood to be my religion, like praying every night to God, but not really having the faith to go to church, going to church, then coming here, reading the Quran and just, you know, ending up here. So Alhamdulillah. Thank you for listening. <laughs> um.